Oh, people are going to hate this video. In the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war. This is the official slogan that Games Workshop bestowed upon its most popular game, Warhammer 40,000. If you've ever had the pleasure of doing an online quiz about which sci-fi universe do you belong in, and the answer comes back Warhammer 40k, I truly feel sorry for you. Who hurt you? Are you, are you okay? It is undeniably one of the most horrific examples of law to have ever existed. Everyday citizens are fed on a substance called corpse starch. Yes, it's exactly what you think it is. Criminals are lobotomized and turned into the unholy amalgamation of flesh and machine to have the job of, I don't know, opening a door or something. And the less said about the demonic lava, the better. I think I'm saying that right? No, seriously, trust me, it's... The grim dark universe is in a constant state of terror, where the doomsday clock is set at one minute of midnight and there's a threat of utter destruction is constantly breathing down your neck, whispering sweet nothings in your ear. In 2023, Warhammer 40k rolled out 10th edition, moving the narrative on approximately by about 30 seconds. Changing some characters, cracking the occasional world in two, but ultimately, nothing much changed. All the various factions are still fighting that same fight. The hierarchy remains unchanged, with the Imperium and forces of chaos battling out while we wait for the glacial approach of the next returning Primarch. A special welcome to the Lion himself, Tywin Lannister. A Dark Angel always pays his debts. In the run-up to 10th edition, I had a thought. With rumours of the big G-dub simplifying the future of the game, I couldn't help but think maybe, just maybe, they might do what they did to Warhammer Fantasy and essentially reset the clock, have a proper reshuffle of the lore and bring a breath of fresh air to the terrifying universe that is 40k. Alas, no, this didn't happen, but my mind had already written my version of what could have happened. What events would rewrite how we saw the 40k law and actually move the story forward? A big disclaimer here, I have read a total of one Black Library book. It was a Gaunt's ghost story, it was over ten years ago, and I can't remember what happened. I'm currently reading the first in the Eisenhorn trilogy, but I've been reading that for about two years, and I'm not even a quarter of the way through, so I thought referencing it wouldn't be that useful. So I'm sure there's going to be incredibly important parts in the existing law that I'm going to miss out or get completely wrong, but that's not the exercise today. This is more of a look into the future of 40k through the lens of my brain. A what-if scenario, if you will. So, with all that said, let me have a go. In our first act, there are two main characters that set everything in motion and start that nuclear snowball rolling. The first being a longtime favourite of mine, a complete enigma and international mad of mystery, Cypher of the Dark Angels, or Chaos, who knows, literally anyone's guess. This will bring an answer to what Cypher has been up to since the Horus Heresy and the very important ally he has made along the way. An unlikely ally in the form of a kleptomaniac metal man called Trazin the Infinite. That's right, the Dark Angel version of John Wick and a Necron Ash Ketchum have created the ultimate buddy cop movie. There is a rumour, a story of reincarnation, one that, should it happen, would bring about the next stage of the 40k saga. The catalyst for this whole story is the death of the God Emperor of Mankind. All this time, Cypher has been gathering information and artefacts to trade with Trazen, working alongside each other with one goal, to reach the Emperor and kill him. Trazen has another motive which we will go into. To clarify, the Emperor is essentially a corpse on a throne at this point, kept alive by machines and the sacrifices of millions of souls. Should he die, the story goes that he will be reborn, and that is what makes Cypher the most loyal servant of all. Suck it, all your Deathwing and Ravenwing douchebags. Our boy Cypher has been only trying to do the right thing. You leave him alone. 
Through a series of what can only be described as trays in shenanigans, the two are able to gain access to the Golden Throne Room, and are stood in front of Big E himself. It's now that we learn the mystery of the sword that Cypher has carried with him for so long. It is indeed the Lion Sword, the fabled sword of the Dark Angel's Primarch, lost during the destruction of Caliban. Cypher draws the elegant blade and pauses to present it to the Emperor. Trazen greedily eyes it, but he's come too far to throw away a bigger prize on the last minute betrayal. A brief pause as the custodies guarding the door get a horrible feeling they're about to have a stern talking to for letting people in without an appointment. Then Cypher plunges the lion sword into the Emperor's chest. You know that sound that is so loud it actually becomes silence? Yeah, that happens. A blinding light fills the Golden Throne Room. Cypher takes a knee, and Trazen promptly does a Zoidberg behind the nearest cover. As the light subsides, a figure clad in golden armour is standing in front of the throne, the ruler of mankind. Not an emperor, but an empress. Trazen pokeballs the Golden Throne itself, completing the Pokedex. The Empress, seeing the Imperium has become exactly what they did not wish it to be, wipes out the High Lords of Terror and anyone that dares to, well, actually her. Custodies are very confused about the whole affair, and while they're having a long, hard think about it, are mostly butchered. The Adeptus Sororitas go into denial. Factions split and scatter, and everyone goes into an existential crisis. The Space Marine legions are ordered back to Terra by the Empress, wishing to meet her sons in her new form. Some go, some don't. Another faction split. Those that resist are branded heretics, anyone who is crazy loyal to the Emperor, so Black Templars, Blood Angels, etc. The Black Company from the Blood Angels are taken advantage from uh, by Korn himself, fueled by rage. The Empress goes on a new crusade, with the mentality of sorting out the Imperium. It starts to crumble as everyone tries to grasp the situation. The Chaos Legions, led by Abaddon, take advantage and lead the final Black Crusade on Holy Terror. Both sides take heavy losses and are left battered and bruised. This results in Terror falling to Chaos, Abaddon going to sit on the Golden Throne only to find empty space. Somewhere, Trazin starts laughing. Eldari and Drugari cultures start mixing more and more, which allows Slanesh to take them out, or kind of take them under their wing. I don't know, something happens. The final Tyranid High Fleet, the one that GW has been hinting at for years, finally arrives and starts eating everything. Orcs see this as an ultimate fight and go in for a scrap. The Tyranids adapt to absorb Orc biomass, and an unholy combination of the two is created, becoming the ultimate threat in the universe. Tyranorcs, Orcanids, I don't know, we'll, we'll workshop it. Leagues of Votan are eaten. Again. Sorry. Tau are the only ones that don't need the warp to travel at speed through space, and flee as far as they can. Time skip a few thousand years. The Imperium is a shadow of its former self. The Empress is on a mighty crusade across the galaxy and has created female space marines. No more excuses. Suck it up, neckbeards. The Chaos Gods have receded into the warp, and they dominate it completely. The Tau return with far superior technology and become the dominant faction. The Greater Good chant rings out across the galaxy, and a new age is born. Now, clearly this is a very brief whistle-stop tour of what could happen. There's plenty of scope to expand the stories on all the factions, how they would interact with each other in this next step of the 40k lore, and act as a launch point for the future of the game. So, what did you think? How much did I ruin your hobby? How would you write the next chapter of the 40k story? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you've enjoyed the content, or if you haven't, just drop a like, share it with your friends, or enemies, or pets, and uh, hit subscribe in the channel. And I will see you next time.